Hi, welcome. My name is Ines de Pablo. I'm the Chief Wagon Officer here at Wagon Enterprises. Wagon offers pet parents and first responders the necessary gear, supplies, and training to effectively mitigate, prepare, and respond to emergencies that impact pet health and safety. Back in 2008, Wagon started the O2-for-Life program. O2-for-Life program is a service that provides first responders the opportunity to acquire pet oxygen masks. There are three ways in which pet first responders can acquire the pet oxygen mask. The first is first responders can purchase them directly through our website. The second is the businesses, pet groups, individuals can sponsor their local fire department, the local station, ambulance, EMS, police, to make sure that the equipment is properly carried by their local responders. The third fashion is the fellowship program, which allows pet, uh, first responders to apply for a fellowship, which means we have, Wagon is going to raise the funds for them. We would like to remind everyone that pet oxygen masks can be used on more than dogs. They can be used on dogs, cats, ferrets, rabbits, birds, snakes, hamsters, anything that you are likely to find in, in a person's home. When you order through the O2 for Life program, you will receive a kit. A kit includes the bag, it includes an instruction sheet, pretty much the same thing we covered today, and the ABC's diagram uh, for cats and dogs. All this is laminated, so you can get it wet, it won't matter. You also get one kit of each size, which will be the large and topper, the medium and small. The Smith Medical Instructions are going to be attached. We recommend that you keep uh, all this together in some kind of a Ziploc bag just in case you don't want to get it all too wet. You also get a CPR magnet that you can leave on the emergency vehicle so it doesn't fly off. And you also get a leash. Most pets that are rescued from burning structures are not going to be leashed inside their own home. So since leashes are not generally the standard apparatus on first responder vehicles, we want to make sure that you have at least one way of restraining the pet and you can also use uh, the leash as an emergency muzzle. It's going to be a temporary emergency muzzle, but we're going to show you here shortly how to use that leash to temporarily restrain the pet should the pet not allow you or become aggressive, fear aggressive or any other type of aggressiveness. For cats, you can use the bag and by itself to restrain the cat. Fortunately, we don't ca have a cat on hand to show you, but this could serve as, unless it's an enormous cat, this could serve to just restrain from the front chest, front paws, and just keep the head here, and you can make this snugger as, you know, as necessary to restrain the cat. You're also gonna get two alerts, to, uh, two um, pet oxygen masks on board stickers. One is to be used for, to, you know, to label on the station, the other one is to be used on the vehicle um, that carries the equipment. Pet oxygen masks come in three sizes, large, medium, and small. You will notice that all three masks have a top stopper, dual vents, and a rubber bottom. Right here. For the large dogs, anything bigger than 40 pounds should probably be using the large mask. Birds, cats, ferrets, hamsters should be using the small one. Pugs, terriers can be using um, the, the medium one. Once you extricate the pet from the house, we strongly recommend you pull the, bag, the, the pet oxygen masks out of your bag, apply the oxygen tubing f to the top stopper, to the top stopper, make sure it is nice and snug. And then apply the other end of the tube to your oxygen tank, apply a ratio. There are three different ratios for these masks. The smaller one has a flow rate of one to three liters, the medium one is three to five liters, and the large one is from five to seven liters. So once you've applied the pet oxygen tubing to the masks and to the tank and you've adjusted um, the, uh, the flow rate, you then apply the mask to the pet's snout. So see here, we'll make this little demo. They might be reluctant at first, however notice that most pets coming out of a fire will be more than happy to help you, help them. So that's pretty much all you have to do as long as the pet is responsive. If that dog loses consciousness, we will show you in the next clip how you can how you can use these masks to apply rescue breathing to a pet if you do wish to not use mouth to snout resuscitation or if you are not trained in that. 
The pet oxygen mask can also be used on animals to provide rescue breathing in case the animal stopped breathing on its own. What you would do in that case is just take the mask, remove the top stopper. You would do so by applying gentle pressure side to side, unhook the tubing, abandon the oxygen tank, and now apply the ambu bag to the mask. You don't have to use the large mask, you can use any mask that you would have appropriately used on that animal using the oxygen tank. So a bird, small cat, small, very small dog, hamsters would still be using the small one, terriers and the like would still be using the medium, gypsy sized animals would be using the medium one. You then apply the mask, make sure the snout is fully inserted, make sure your fingers keep the vents closed, you don't want that air to escape and then use the ambu bag to provide rescue breathing. You do want to make sure that when you do use the ambu bag, on the large dog it's okay to use a regular adult ambu bag, but on the small one we strongly recommend you use a petty ambu bag for uh, infant size or child size. You, you don't want to uh, over inflate the lungs. Maybe here is going to help us um, demo the uh, emergency muzzle. You're going to start by making, you're going to take the leash, make a loop towards the center, get it fairly ready for the snout, the appropriate side of the dog's snout. Come from the side, you don't want to come from the front, it seems a little too confrontational. Mayday. Sit. Start from the top. Don't make it too tight just yet. Come under, back, make one loop. One side is going to be longer than the other. You're going to take the longest part and you're going to come through the front. That's why you don't want to make it too snug at first. Make come from the front and under. And you pull. This will give you leverage on the dog. This is a temporary muzzle. It should not be left unattended with the dog. It, any muzzle that's unattended can and will come off. In the case the dog stops breathing or starts having seizures, you want to remove this muzzle immediately. We strongly recommend that parents place alert stickers on their residences. Whether you live in an apartment or in an actual house, you will need to let the fire department know and first responders know that you have pets inside the residence in case they need to be rescued. Pet oxygen masks were first used by veterinarians inside veterinary clinics for various purposes. Over time, we figured out that it was appropriate for use in the field. Once in the field, pet oxygen masks made their way and onto fire engines. They are now being used to make sure that once the pet is extricated from the burning house, it can be provided with help on the scene. Remember that pets, like people, have lungs and will suffer from smoke inhalation just the same as we did. The extent of damage caused by smoke inhalation varies depending on the degree of exposure and the toxicity levels. Severe lung damage can occur in pets even if they show little in the way of burns to their skin or mouth. Any pet taken out of a burning structure needs to be seen by a veterinarian immediately, whether or not it is showing symptoms, as these symptoms may develop within the next 24 to 48 hours. Signs of respiratory inflammation or inflammation of the nasal passages, nasopharynx, larynx, trachea, lower airway passages, and or the lungs include greater effort to breathe, increased respiratory rate, sneezing, wheezing, nasal discharge, and or coughing. Smoke inhalation can also cause the pet to be disoriented and or confused. It may faint, have seizures, or in the worst case scenarios, enter a comatose state and or die. Other signs of smoke inhalation in pets include bright red, bright red mucous membrane inside the lip. You can just raise the lip and you'll look, give it a um, cap refill. Anything over two seconds will, in, will signify that the pet is having bad uh, blood pressure. Dry, unproductive cough, hoarse breathing sounds, increased effort of breathing, irritation of the eye, discharge from the eyes or nose, collapse, unconsciousness, Respiratory distress, respiratory or cardiac arrest. Cleaning the pet oxygen mask is really simple. There are two parts that are detachable, the top stopper and the bottom section. Please don't try to remove the vents, they are non-removable. Just remove the top stopper, 
and then remove the bottom. You can clean it with a regular sponge, we're re using regular dish soap. Once you're done, you can just replace the bottom like so. And remove the top stopper. And there you go. That's how you clean a pit oxygen mask. Using pit oxygen mask is simple, but it makes a world of difference to the lives of pets in your community. Thank you for choosing Wagon as your pet oxygen mask provider.